Okay, this is notes eight dash three. Okay, the first thing we see is exponential growth and decay. We have an equation, we have a table, and we have a graph. So it's telling me it wants me to graph this guy here. So all of our tables, we're gonna do exactly the same. We're gonna put zero right in the middle. So we're gonna go two less. So negative one, negative two, two more, one, two. And you could go ahead and pre-fill your other table because all of our tables will do the same. Zero, negative one, negative two, one, two. Okay, so it's pre-filled. Now, with our calculators we have here, we're not gonna wanna put one half in because it's gonna give us fractions on our Y's and those are harder to graph than, than decimals are. So we're gonna change that one half to 0.5, okay? So here we go. First thing, put it in a calculator. All right, we got clear, whatever the other class had in. Put in three parentheses, 0.5, close them, raise to the X power, hit graph. And what is that graph doing from left to right? Going up or going down? Down. Going down. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the points. Okay, so second graph to get to my table. Okay, second graph to get to my table. And then I'm gonna pre-fill these guys, or the ones that I have pre-filled. I'm gonna fill them in. Negative two is 12. Negative one is six. Zero is three. One is 1.5. Two is 0.75. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna take these guys, I'm gonna plot those points. Over negative two, up 12, this is 10 up at the top, so I go up two more. On your homework, it may give you some Y values that are much higher than that. You don't have to graph those, only graph the ones that fit on here. I just did it because it's only two up. Over negative one, up six, one, two, three, four, five, six, put a point. Over zero, up three, put a point. Over one, up 1 1.5, put a point. Over two, up 0.75. Now the graph goes, and it's gonna get super close, but it will never, ever, ever touch across the x-axis, okay? So, think of it like, um, Think of it like cutting a piece of paper in half. If I cut a piece of paper in half, uh, how many times can I actually cut it? Like, not actual, but like, in, in theory, can I cut a piece of paper in half? Yes, twice. How many times, like in theory though, like not, not, not physically? Once. Infinite, right? Infinite mm -hmm. amount of times. Because if you cut something in half, you, you have something left. You cut that in half, you cut that in half, you cut that in half, there's still something left. So that's what's happening with our X here, is it's getting closer to our X axis, but it's not actually uh, touching it, okay? Isn't that the thing with like the five and inch spiral thing? The yes, thing? yes, okay. All right, so here we go. Now, answering the question that comes with it, what happens to the function y value? So my y value, what's happening to my y as my x increases? As my x is, is going up, what's my y doing? Decreasing. Decreasing. Y value decreases. Okay, now we're ready to put in the second one. Okay, put it in the Y equals in our calculator. Three, parentheses, two, close them, raise to the X power, hit graph. What do you notice about this graph? Goes up, man. Goes up from left to right. So let's go to our table, second graph, and we're gonna fill in our table. So negative two is 0.75, negative one is 1.5, zero is three, one is six, and two is 12. Okay, now we're ready to graph it over negative two, up 0.75. Yep, over negative one, up one and a half, over zero, up three, over one, up six, there's three, four, five, six. 
and over to up 12, which I know is two off the graph. And it's gonna get close to the x-axis, but never touch it. And then it makes its upward trajectory and skyrockets up, which is what you hope your money does in the stock market. Okay, so now in this case, what happened to my Y value as my X increased? My X is increased, what my Y's do? Increased. They increased. Y value increases. What you mean? As my X's got bigger, my Y's also got bigger. Now don't flip it yet, because I want to label something real quick, it'll make the back make more sense. Look at number two, for example. What's being raised to the X power? What is it? What is actually touching the X power? Which number? Three or two? Which one of these guys is actually touching the X power? Anybody? No? Scott, we don't know what's touching the X power? Two. Two. So we're gonna label this guy with a lowercase b. The number in front, we're gonna label it with an uppercase a. Okay? So now with that same knowledge, Chris Don, what's touching the x up here? One half. One half. So I'm gonna put a lowercase b right there, and over that three, I'm gonna put an uppercase a. So now if we flip it over, It'll make more sense. Whatever is touching the X is our B. So if it's immediately touching it, it's our B. Okay, so and if our B is greater than zero but less than one, which means it is, if it's greater than zero, but it's a number less than one, that means it's a what? Like what kind of number is it? Negative? Well, not a negative, it's greater than zero, but less than one. Yeah. What's an example of something that's greater than zero but less than one? Uh, um, in, uh, like, a, like a half? Like a half or a third or any of those decimals. Okay, so long as it's less than one but greater than zero, our Y value will always decrease as the value of X increases. That is exponential decay. Okay, so if the number that is attached to the exponent of x is less than 1, then it's decay. If that number touching the x, my b is greater than 1, then that is the y will increase as the value of x increases. The graph represents exponential growth. So let's take a look at these guys. What's touching the X on A? Five. Don't get caught up um, and thinking that's our A value. That's not. Whatever is touching the X, see how this is touching the X? Whatever's immediately touching it is our B value. So if it makes you feel warm and fuzzy to go ahead and put parentheses around that five, you can. Okay, what's my A value out front? If there's nothing out front, what can I put there that won't change the value? A 1. So my A value is 1. My B value is 5. Therefore, this is exponential what? Growth or decay? Growth. If that B value is greater than 1, it's growth. What's my A value on this next one? One, what's my B value? 24. That would be exponential decay. Okay, next one. A value. Decay. It's going to be a decay, but the A value is up what? Eight. B value is? And exponential decay. And last one? Four. 4 is my A, 2.5, 2.5, so that's exponential growth. Okay, don't get caught up. Someone uh, earlier got caught up with it being a decimal, but it doesn't matter if it's a decimal. It's 2.5, that's greater than 1. We're going to do A, 8, dash, 3, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 
Slow. It won't take you but about five minutes to do it. Okay, turn in on my desk when you're done. That concludes the notes for 8-3.